Have you ever wondered why Africa, a continent rich in natural resources, struggles economically? A land blessed with mineral wealth, fertile soils, and a youthful population, yet grappling with economic challenges. The paradox is indeed intriguing. Could it be the way the financial system is structured, or perhaps the influence of foreign powers? Maybe it's a mix of both. This paradox is deeply rooted in the evolution of Africa's financial system and the rise of neocolonialism. To understand the current state, we need to delve into the history of Africa's financial system. Let's begin with the pre-colonial period, a time when Africa's economic systems were as diverse as the continent itself. From the vibrant trade routes of the Saharan caravans to the various means of exchange among diverse African ethnic groups, Africa's financial system was largely self-sufficient and decentralized. Then came the colonial period, a time of drastic transformation. With the arrival of European powers, Africa's financial landscape was drastically altered. Colonial powers introduced their own currencies, banking systems, and economic policies. African economies were restructured to serve the economic interests of the colonizers, often at the expense of local development. The Berlin Conference of 1884, where Africa was arbitrarily divided amongst European powers, further solidified this financial control. This event marked the start of a monetary system heavily influenced by foreign powers. In the post-colonial era, many African nations sought to regain control of their financial systems. However, the legacy of colonialism proved difficult to shake off. Many newly independent nations inherited financial institutions and systems that were deeply intertwined with their former colonizers. This dependency was further reinforced by the Bretton Woods institutions, such as the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, which often imposed structural adjustment programs that favored Western economic interests. In the late 20th century, the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication, or SWIFT, was introduced. While it revolutionized global banking, it also extended the reach of Western financial institutions into Africa, further entrenching the continent's economic dependency. Fast forward to the 21st century, the financial landscape across Africa remains a complex tapestry woven from threads of pre-colonial self-reliance, colonial manipulation, and post-colonial struggles for economic sovereignty. The remnants of colonial influence are still visible in today's financial systems across the continent. This isn't just a historical observation but a reality that continues to shape Africa's financial future. As we explore the rise of neocolonialism and the threat of central bank digital currency, remember the echoes of the past and the present. Neocolonialism, a subtle yet powerful form of control, has found its way into Africa's financial systems. Let's start with the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication, SWIFT for short. This global banking system, controlled predominantly by Western powers, is a crucial cog in global finance. It enables banks to send and receive information about financial transactions in a secure, standardized environment. But here's the rub. When African nations are heavily reliant on a system controlled from outside, it leaves them susceptible to the whims and fancies of those in control. Imagine the scenario where a nation is cut off from the SWIFT system. It would be like a sudden cardiac arrest for the country's economy, unable to receive or send money internationally. It's not just a hypothetical scenario, it's happened before, serving as a potent weapon of economic warfare. Now let's shift our focus to leadership, particularly foreign selected African leaders. It's no secret that foreign powers have a long history of influencing leadership selection in African nations. This form of neocolonialism is far more insidious, as it masquerades under the guise of democracy. Leaders chosen not for their commitment to their people, but for their compliance with foreign interests. The result? Policies and decisions that often favor these foreign powers at the expense of local development and economic autonomy. These two elements, control over financial transactions and leadership selection, intertwine to form a stranglehold on Africa's economic future. It's a complex web of power dynamics that continues to hinder Africa's progress towards true economic independence. The impact is far-reaching. It stifles innovation, discourages local enterprise, and perpetuates a cycle of debt and dependence. It's a system that benefits the few at the expense of the many, restricting Africa's ability to dictate its own economic path. Neo-colonialism thus continues the cycle of economic dependence and hampers Africa's progress. It's a sobering reality, but not a foregone conclusion. As we'll explore in the next scene, 
there are emerging strategies of resistance that could potentially alter this dynamic. A new tool of control has emerged in the 21st century, central bank digital currency. This isn't your typical currency, it's digital and issued by central banks, hence the name. But what's so threatening about it, especially in the context of Africa? Let's delve into that. Central Bank Digital Currency, or CBDC for short, is a digital form of fiat money. In other words, it's a currency established as money by government regulation or law. The key feature of CBDC is that it is centralized. It is issued and regulated by the competent monetary authority of the country. Unlike cryptocurrencies, which are decentralized and operate independently of a central bank, CBDCs provide the central bank with unprecedented control over the currency. Now let's switch our focus to Africa. The continent has been striving for economic independence for decades. However, the introduction of CBCs could undermine this endeavor. If foreign powers, through their central banks, were to issue CBDCs and introduce them to African economies, they could potentially manipulate economic conditions. They could exert control over trade, influence inflation rates and dictate economic policies. Imagine this scenario, a foreign power issues a CBDC and makes it the dominant currency in an African country, replacing the local currency. The foreign power can now control the money supply, set interest rates, and even track every single transaction made with the CBDC. This would give them an incredible amount of control over the African country's economy, reducing the nation's economic sovereignty. The potential negative impacts are enormous. The economic future of the country would be in the hands of the foreign power issuing the CBDC. Economic policies would be dictated by foreign interests, and local industries could suffer under these imposed conditions. Moreover, the country's ability to manage its own economy could be severely compromised, as the foreign power could manipulate the value of the CBDC to its advantage, causing instability. In essence, the introduction and dominance of CBDCs could potentially turn African economies into puppet economies, controlled by external forces. It's a chilling prospect that echoes the dark days of colonialism. But this time it's not armies and governors exerting control, it's digital currency, quietly and subtly dictating the terms of Africa's economic future. So you see the CBDC is not just a currency, it's a tool of control, a new form of 21 saint century neo-colonialism. It's a threat that could undermine Africa's hard-won progress towards economic independence. The threat of central bank digital currency further complicates Africa's quest for economic independence. Despite these challenges, Africa is not without defenses. De-dollarization presents a potential form of resistance. So what does de-dollarization mean? It's essentially a shift away from the US dollar as the primary currency of exchange and reserve. Instead, African nations would lean on their own currencies or alternative international currencies, thus mitigating the influence of the dollar. De-dollarization could be a powerful tool in the fight against neo-colonial control. By reducing reliance on the dollar, African nations can work towards building a more self-reliant and resilient economy. It provides an opportunity to strengthen national currencies and foster regional economic integration. This could mean more control over monetary policy and less vulnerability to external economic shocks. Moreover, de-dollarization could also enable African countries to avoid sanctions and financial controls imposed through the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication Banking System. It's a step towards economic sovereignty, a chance to chart an independent economic course. But let's not gloss over the challenges. De-dollarization is not a magic wand. It requires robust economic policy, a stable political climate, and a significant level of economic development. And there's the issue of trust. For decades, the dollar has been seen as a safe haven. Convincing the populace to trust in their national currency or regional alternatives will be no small feat. Yet, the potential benefits cannot be ignored. Economies like Russia and China have already begun the process of de-dollarization, and Africa could learn from their experiences. It's a long journey no doubt but one that holds the promise of greater economic independence and resilience. Remember, de-dollarization is not an end in itself. It's a means to an end. The end being a more autonomous, prosperous, and equitable Africa. An Africa that controls its economic destiny. De-dollarization could be a crucial step towards reclaiming Africa's economic sovereignty. It's a bold move, and certainly not without its challenges. But for a continent that's been at the mercy of external economic forces for too long, perhaps it's a leap worth taking. 
So, we've traversed through a journey of Africa's financial system, the rise of neo-colonialism and potential defenses. We've seen how the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication, or SWIFT, has been a tool for imperialistic control, with foreign powers influencing Africa's financial decisions. We've also discussed how this influence extends to the selection of African leaders, further consolidating control. This paradox is striking. Africa, a continent rich in resources yet struggling economically due to these external influences. An emerging threat we've examined is the central bank digital currency, a potential tool for 21st century neocolonialism. Yet, there is hope. We've explored the potential resistance through de-dollarization, a move that could empower Africa to take control of its economic destiny. Understanding these dynamics is crucial for anyone interested in Africa's economic future and the global financial landscape, because after all, the fate of Africa will have far-reaching implications on the world's economic tapestry. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.